Okay, so this video, the topic is going to be how to use fair value gaps to trade. So I've made a couple of videos on fair value gaps, like how to find fair value gaps and do fair value gaps need to be filled. But in this one, this video specifically is how to use them to trade because I had a comment on one of my most recent videos saying I get how to find fair value gaps, but I'm not sure how to use them to trade. And I've gone over this I actually thinking like my trade review, you kind of could have gleaned that and maybe a few other videos, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper in this because there's actually, there's a couple different ways you could use fair value gap in your trading. So number one, draw on liquidity or like PTs, draw on liquidity and PT. I mean, they're not really the same thing. You could have something as like a draw on liquidity, but still not be your PT, but they kind of go hand in hand here. So that's number one, draw on liquidity. And then number two is for entries. So you can grab price as it comes down into the fair value gap now and we're gonna we're gonna kind of dig a little deep into that like when to enter using the fair value gap in this video so yeah let's so let's start with what was option number one draw liquidity so i want you to just so just pretend for a second that this is where price is currently trading look at my cursor just pretend with me for a second that's where price is currently trading and what do we have right here our fair value gap and again if you haven't watched my other two videos, how to find fair value gaps and the other one, make sure there's going to be a link to that in the video description and my blog post is going to be a link in the video description. Make sure you watch those first because otherwise you're probably going to be a little bit lost. So this is a fair value gap though, right here on the daily chart. Okay. So I'm going to mark that real quick. And this is, what is it? It's untapped, right? So that's a fair value gap. One, two, three, all body, the first and the third candle, they are not touching. That makes it a fair value gap. Okay, so all this all fair value gap is it's a portion of the chart that was not efficiently delivered. That's all it is. That little portion of price action, it was not efficiently efficiently delivered. Okay, the move in here was too extreme, too strong, and as a result, this little period of price action, it was not efficiently delivered. Think of it like the name fair value gap. Price did not have a fair chance of being efficiently delivered. Get it? Fair value gap. It did not have a fair shot. It was too quick, too strong. It did not have a fair shot of being efficiently delivered in there. Too quick, too strong. Didn't spend enough time in that area. So it wasn't able to be efficiently delivered. Okay. And knowing this info, if price was not efficiently delivered in there, what's it likely going to want to do in the future? It's going to want to efficiently deliver that period of price action, that portion of price action. Okay. It's an inefficiency in price. It doesn't want to leave it like that. It's going to want to come up into that level. And that's where we, we, um, introduce draw on liquidity. That's where that drawn to draw into liquidity comes into play because we know price is going to want to draw up into that level to efficiently deliver that period of price action. So this is where like having PTs and stuff really, or becomes useful because say you were just pretend for a second, you saw something down here that made you bullish that made you want to go long and this is a really good extra confirmation i guess you could say to support your idea because you know price wants to wants to draw up into this area so maybe you could have your pt up in this area because you know price wants to draw up into it okay it's in a discount so this could be like it could help you form your pts is kind of what i'm getting at here and it serves as a draw on liquidity so that was option number one is you can use the fair value gap as like draws on liquidities, helping you get your PTs. That's option number one. Option number two is you can get your entries inside of the fair value gap, which is probably what most of you are more familiar with. It's option number two is getting your entries inside the fair value gap. So like, for example, once it does efficiently deliver a period of price action or a portion of price action, you can look for the reversal off of that little portion, off of that little fair value gap. <laughs> Okay, so, and then you can see option number one, what happened, it's drawn up, it's actually drawn up into it right now. You can see that it's drawn, it hasn't completely closed it in yet, but it is drawn up into that bearish fair value gap at the current moment. Okay, and here is an example of a bullish fair value gap where you could have caught a possible long play in there. And we're going to go down to the intraday chart here in a second as well. But see that? One, two, three, bullish fair value gap, taps up, taps down into it, and then it draws up, draws up into that bearish imbalance. So we actually have two, both examples, option number one and option number two, both playing out right here on the daily chart. 
right there on the daily chart, there's a prime example. There was your draw on liquidity. It was not efficiently delivered. Then you had this little period of consolidation in here where orders were getting accumulated and then boom, now it's pressing up into this little imbalance, this draw on liquidity. And then on this large move up right here with that shift in structure right there, you had your imbalance created. Price did what? And this is a draw on liquidity too. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. It was a draw on liquidity right where it opened up right here. This is where that candle opened up right above that imbalance until it, so beforehand, before it tapped down into it, it was, this was a draw on liquidity too, to the upside because this little portion of price actually was not efficiently delivered, okay? And when his price is not efficiently delivered, price is probably gonna wanna do what in the near future? It's gonna wanna efficiently deliver. It's gonna wanna tap down into that area, pick up more orders and take off. That's exactly what it did. It started out as a draw on liquidity. You could have maybe, I mean, if that's your thing, if you're like an ultra scalper, you could have looked for shorting opportunities just down into that fair value gap right there for just a little scalp opportunity, boom, reversed it, went long, boom, takes it up into that. That's if you're like, that's if you're like really good though. You know, not many people can like switch in between like that, like go short, go long, go short, go long. You just play these little pockets of price action. Some people can, but you got to be kind of more advanced to do it. So we're going to go down to an intraday chart and we're going to look at how we could uh, play this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so now we're on a intraday chart of ES, S&P 500. So here was that little, here was this impulse swing up right here. See this? this big swing up and this top shaded area. So like this, if you look at my cursor, like see this top shaded area, that was that bearish imbalance on the daily chart. And this bottom one is that bullish imbalance on the daily chart. Now it's just displayed on an intraday time frame. So you can see we've got this original push up, up into that bearish fair value gap on the daily chart. See what it pressed up into it really hard. You got a really nice move up into that imbalance, AKA enter in a premium marketplace. Now this is how you could play this short opportunity down into that bullish fair value gap, which would, like we've already stated, was a draw on liquidity before it touched down into it. So when it was up here and it was trading up into this bearish imbalance and now we had this bullish imbalance created, that is now a new draw on liquidity for us. So there's opportunities in there on your intraday time frame where you could look for a short opportunity down into that imbalance, which you can see was pro provided in here. We see how price just pushed up into that imbalance and then it rejected, sewed off and drew, it drew down into this. So again, we have both, we have, we have both scenarios, option one and option, option two playing out right here. We have a, we have a draw on liquidity or you could have hit the reversal once it pushed up into that fair value gap on the daily. Let's go down to a little bit of a lower time frame. see what we got here. So now we're on a five minute chart and here's how you can get really precise. Now I know I'm gonna have probably somebody saying that I'm cherry picking this or that, yeah, yeah, easy in hindsight, but I'm telling you, if you just, if you go and study your charts, you'll see the, the same pattern repeats. So this is kind of something that you'll probably recognize from like ICT's mentorship. Is it's like, and again, the fair value gaps, his concept as well. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in this video, but um, here is a really, so you, it's important to utilize. So when you're trading, it's important to utilize different time frames, okay? And that, cause that really helps you minimize your risk much more, maximize your reward. So for example, now we're on a five minute chart and we, again, this is still that larger time frame fair value gap up here. And then that's your draw, your new draw on liquidity right there. Okay, because remember, we had a bullish fair value gap created on that push up higher <laughs> right there that hasn't been tapped into yet. That's your draw on liquidity. And then price pushed up into that bearish fair value up on the daily. Okay, now you could possibly, so just imagine for a second, just ima let's imagine for a second that we're shorting this. Say all this didn't happen yet. We see price running up, running up, running up, running up and say, hey, I wanna short this. I like this. I'm aware that it's trading up into a bearish imbalance on the daily. I'm aware it's in a premium, it's overbought. And I think this is gonna draw down into that daily fair value gap here pretty soon. So this is where you can utilize like your smaller time frame. And remember, I want you to remember price is fractal. It's 100% fractal. So what occurs on one time frame, you, you'll see a lot of, you'll see like the same exact signatures on your lower time frames, like your 15, your five minute. It's the same exact shit. It's just on a lower time frame. Okay. So for example, right here, you might notice this is like that ICT 2022 mentorship signature. So right here, see this? 
price was curling up it was pushing up pushing up pushing up pushing up right here what is that see what we got right there you have a swing low level and pay close attention because i'm giving you a way that you can play fair value gaps right here to so play cl play really close attention see how it formed that swing low level right there and then boom you gotta move lower what happens what is that that is a shift in market structure don't want mar don't know what market structure is search my playlist on my channel i have a whole series on market structure okay because it ties into this see that it boom breaking market structure and this is key what was created on that breaking market structure a fair value gap so now we have our lower time frame fair value gap inside of that higher time frame fair value gap okay so this is where this is based this is option number two again using fair value gaps for entries for your confirmation to get in okay and so again so far what, ha what have we concluded we've traded up into a larger time frame daily chart imbalance okay so that's your larger time frame level we traded up into a daily imbalance we efficiently delivered a portion of that price action not all not all of it but a portion of that price action and then once you see price doing something like that that's where you go to your lower time frame and you look for confirmation oh and also remember what else do we got down here we have that bullish fair value gap that was created on that push up higher this is our draw on liquidity this is our p possible pt area again draw on liquidity is not really the same as pt but it can be it just depends on I guess how big your cojones are, how much you want to hold, or how long you want to hold. But um, yeah, you could though. I mean, and if you did do that, look at the risk reward you would have on something like that. I mean, that's fucking that's fucking insane. The risk reward you'd have on something like that if you were. I guess if you were ballsy enough to hold it down into that draw on liquidity. But like for example, here's your fair value gap. That's your confirmation. That's your shift in structure. You could have went long as it tapped up into that fair value gap. Put your stop above the high, and you could have had your PT. Well, that's kind of up to you. Again, if you if you wanted to be really bossy, you could hold down for that fair value gap. And if you did, I mean, sheesh, you are well rewarded. Again, draw on liquidity, this bullish fair value gap. And then we tapped up into that one, into that daily fair value gap, which is where you could get your reversal point, but then we utilize like different time frames. So for example, like in this case, I went down to the five minute chart and we could utilize that. Look for, because remember price is fractal, look for a signature. So for example, your shift in structure with a fair value gap created. Okay. Got it right here. You could have went short and caught that large move lower. And then price does what? It draws down into that bullish imbalance. Now you can do the same thing. You could look for opportunities down here and possibly look for price to come up and fill in a little bit more portion of that fair value gap so like right here for example you can see how price it traded down to that fair value gap traded down into it traded down into it dug down into it pretty deep and then boom what do we have right here we have what we call an impulse move higher so like when new so news came out and we had that impulse impulse move higher aka a shift in market structure what was created on the shift in market structure inside inside of that larger time frame imbalance so this was previously our draw on liquidity now that it's drawn down into that and it's efficiently delivered a portion of that price action you always want to wait and see what the reaction is going to be this is a bigger reaction off of news off of news and then you had a strong shift in structure fair value get created right here and what happens price draws down into that now again kind of see how this is all tying together if you're paying attention Again, it the cycle repeats again. The cycle repeats. We had a new fair value gap created down here. You could have waited for the reversal to grab a long entry down here, or say up here, for example. Say you want to say you're just a scalper, and now guess what? What do you have at this point? You have a new draw on liquidity down here. So let's imagine for a second right here, this 10 o'clock area. I guarantee there was opportunities in there where you could have scalped that down into that fair value gap. Let's go down a few different time frames here, take a peek. So again, now we're on a one minute chart. So you can see right here, there's that now it's just displayed on a lower time frame. You got that fair value gap down there. That's your new draw on liquidity. So you could have looked, utilized different time frames, and you could have looked for signs that this was selling off up here showing signs of weakness so you could have just scalped it 
and you could have scalped it down into that new draw on liquidity. Again, what's the signature? Easiest way is shift in structure, fair value gap created. Do we have it? Right here, we did have a shift in structure and it left a fair value gap right there. See that? Never did tap up into it, so you would have missed it. I mean, you could have hit this one, but it's kind of an aggressive entry. So this might have just this might have been something you missed, but just for like the sake of like an example. Yep, see so it didn't tap up into that one either. It did tap down and tap up into this one. See that? All these are fair value gaps. And then it did it did reject off of that one. So that first fair value gap right there, it tapped up into it. So again, this would be kind of an aggressive entry and but just let's just like for the sake of this example, let's say you hit it. Let's say, hey, it tapped up into this fair value gap right here. That is bearish because it efficiently delivered that little portion of price action. You could have put your stop where above high of day would be the smart way to do it because you do have these other imbalances right here that haven't been tapped into. So your smart play would be to above to be above high of day. And you could have took it down into that draw on liquidity down there and you could have you would have got a really, really nice move. So you kind of see how this all ties together. You want to utilize different time frames because price is fractal. And all you need to understand is there's really two uses of the fair value gap is for that draw and for your entries. That's it. That's literally it. And here's another prime example on ES. So I actually posted this this morning. So right here, you can see one hour ES. What I have outlined in this picture right here that I posted in my free Discord chat price tapped down into a bullish imbalance see that see how it tapped down into that bullish imbalance tested a bullish order block <laughs> and then i indicated that i think it's going to go up which it did it went up it had a really nice move so let's drop down and let's kind of pinpoint what i was referring to this morning so here is here that is again we're going to go over Using this example, just to kind of drive it home, how you could play fair value gaps, both ways you can do it. There's that imbalance that I posted this morning. Okay, so what happened, London session, or well, right after the bell, or right after opening midnight price, we had our little Judas swing lower, AKA our fake run for to drive that liquidity out of the marketplace, and then boom, we get a huge move higher. What's that huge move higher? That's our shift in market structure. So that tells us that bulls are in control. We had that shift, broke that high, and we ended up leaving what? We left a fair value gap in here, okay? So let's just pretend for a second that the one hour chart is like one of our larger time frames. So say you're like an ultra scalper and the one hour chart's like your primary, your primary larger time frame. Of course you wanna look at your daily chart and stuff, but let's say the one hour is just like your major larger time frame. Now I posted this as a possible buying opportunity down here, but say you don't want to do that. Say you're, well, you would be counter trend trade in this, but let's just do it for this example. And this is a way you could do it because remember, what is this? It's also a draw on liquidity before it tapped into it. So pretend this didn't happen right here. Say that move right there did not happen and price came up this close right here. So we have a fair value gap closed. You could have looked for an opportunity to short down into that drawn liquidity. Again, we got to do what though? We got to utilize our lower time frames and look for that confirmation or see if it even gave a confirmation. Cause you know what? Sometimes it's not going to give a confirmation. And I know that's, that drives that alone, that right there drives so many people insane. They cannot accept that. Guess what? Sometimes you're not going to have your confirmation. Sometimes you're going to miss a play. Sometimes you're going to miss several plays in a row. Get over it. It's going to happen. You got to accept it. That's part of it. But let's utilize different time frames here. And let's see what we had. So there's that. Now it's displayed on a five minute chart. There's that imbalance right there. See, we sweep that sell side liquidity, came down into it, and then boom, we had that nice reversal. But again, we're looking for how we could have played the draw on liquidity. Let's see if there's any opportunity in here. I don't think there was really. I mean, I'd be kind of reaching. I'd be reaching to say if there was anything really interested in there. Yeah, there really wasn't much you could have played for the draw on liquidity, but I, th I think y'all get the point of what I'm making with this. So before this was tapped down into this, this was a draw on liquidity before it tapped down into it. So you could, again, you could have looked for shorting opportunities to take down into that little imbalance. And also you have these sell stops right here, pretty clean lows right here. 
price that just gives it even further confirmation that these clean lows are right inside that fair value gap so they're just waiting just waiting to be sweeped take them out so again you could have looked for shorting opportunities even though you kind of be i don't really see anything in there worth shorting up in that area the money was in that reversal play so once it came down and it efficiently delivered that little period of price action you could have got long again you could utilize different time frames if you wanted to Let's see if we had any, see if we could have narrowed down our risk a bit more. Again, we want to look for, probably for that shift in structure. Yep, you got it. Right there. Right there, you got it. All right, I want you to find it. So this is, again, this is that one hour fair value gap. So just pretend for a second that's like your larger time frame level. Price does what? It comes down into that larger time frame level. And now you're utilizing lower time frames to look for that confirmation. So you can narrow down your risk a bit more. Okay. So for example, we had a shift in structure right here. See this swing high? See that? I'm gonna note it on there for you real quick. We broke that swing high after coming off of that fair value gap. There's your shift in structure right there. Okay, and now you wanna look to see if you had a fair value gap that was created on that shift in structure. Down here, you have it. Okay, see that? Now, it wasn't a very strong shift in structure, but still it is a shift in market structure. There's your fair value gap on the five minute. See right there. Then after it had that shift, price did what? It drawed, listen closely, it drawed down. So heck, even if you could have went on the one minute chart, you might have had an opportunity, opportunity in there, depending on what your setup is, to scalp it down into that drawn liquidity just on the five minute chart, if that's your thing. I mean, you'd have to be like an ultra scalper, but it was a drawn liquidity. It did sell off and it drew down into that liquidity right there. It took out those sell stops, drew down into that fair value gap. There was your opportunity to get long right there off of the reversal, off that fair value gap. Stop could have been underneath that low or underneath of the fair value gap low. Again, that's another key thing. When you're playing like fair value gap entries, a really good place to keep your stop is just underneath of the fair value gap. Okay, so for example, three candles make the fair value gap. You put your stop underneath of the low of the fair value gap. So you could have put it like right here, for example. Okay, and just look at the risk, the risk reward. I know we're looking at this in hindsight, so it's it's a little bit easier, but I mean, it's the same signatures. I mean, it's the same exact fucking signatures all the time. It's the same shit. And it's really, I want to drive through your head that price is fractal. Again, you want to utilize different time frames. You want to utilize your larger time frames to find those larger time frame levels, those larger time frame fair value gaps, but then utilize your lower time frames for like your entries so you can get a little bit more precise. Look for those lower time frame confirmations. Okay. What's that lower time frame confirmation? You want that shift in market structure with a fair value gap left. And yeah, that's that's your lower time frame sh or confirmation. Okay, we had it right there. You could have got in, boom, risking the low. You were able to minimize your risk so much more using that lower time frame, and you could have milked out quite a lot on that. So I'm gonna have, I'm definitely gonna have more videos coming up on this in the future, like for like trade reviews, etc. And it should really start to stick. But I think I think if you watch this a couple times. You go into your own charts, you study your own charts, study my other videos on it. I think it'll start to click for you. I think it'll start to clear up. Again, draw on liquidity is one way. And then the reversal off once, once it is efficiently delivered. That's all it is. That's the two ways to do it. It's that simple. It's that straightforward. So hopefully I'll find this useful. Catch you later.